there is never any total freedom until there is knowledge the power of the oppressor is the ignorance of the oppressed why the power of the oppressed is the illumination and the knowledge he acquires the road to our destiny is not a free ride brothers and sisters don't mistake deliverance for freedom you have been delivered from darkness to light but you are yet not free because it's one thing to pull a man out of a mud it's another thing to help the man bring out all the mud in his intestine i'm taking you on a journey the man is free from being in mud but the man is not free from mud within because there is a mud without and mud within and the mud within is more powerful because it determines the actual state of the man god wants every one of us to be armed with the understanding that it's a warfare the word of god is the foundation for a prevailing life be impacted as the word of god comes to you today through the teachings of the senior pastor kingdom privilege ministry dr pt mene somebody shout hallelujah hallelujah somebody shout hallelujah welcome two or three persons by your side welcome them to church say you are welcome to church this sunday morning glory to god hallelujah you can have your seat in the presence of the lord glory to god hallelujah are you ready to receive this morning? Yes, are you sure you are ready to receive this morning? Yes, Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Please put on the screen quickly for me. Exodus chapter 13, 17. Glory to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Are you ready to receive this morning? Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. God is faithful. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Exodus 13 and verse 17. I give you a background. It came to a certain time in the life of the children of Israel where they were in Egypt and they were in bondage. Are you with me? First of all, they came, the children of Israel came into Egypt through Joseph, who was the prime minister. Are you with me? Okay, but now there came another king, Pharaoh, who knew not Joseph and began to maltreat the people of God. So they became in bondage in Egypt. Are you with me? So they were made servants and they cried unto God for help. For so many years, as a matter of fact, they were there for 430 years until God heard their cry. Are you with me? And raised Moses to deliver them from Egypt to the promised land. Glory to God. Okay, so in the process of the deliverance, God decided that he's taking them to the promised land so that they can become a nation that will be free to serve the God they want to serve. Are you with me? And they will no more be under bondage, under Pharaoh. Glory to God. And God, by his mighty hand, with so much miracles, delivered them from Egypt. Glory to God. But there is a very quiet process in the deliverance that I want to share with us this morning. Glory to God. There's a part of the deliverance process which God used in bringing them into liberty that the church needs to know, Nigeria needs to know, and the world needs to understand it because the way God delivers nation is the same way God delivers individuals. The deliverance process of our deliverance, our, our personal life is connected to how God also delivers nations. Are you sure you are with me? Are you sure you are with me? Okay, so look at the scripture. Exodus 13, 17. The Bible says, and it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, Let's peradventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. Are you with me? So I said there's a salient point I want, to, I want to show us in the process of deliverance. The road to freedom. Are you sure you're with me? So God had decided that he's taking them from Egypt to the promised land. But in Egypt, there's a little link between the Philistines to go to Canaan. So you can pass through Egypt. That road is still there to you today. 
You can pass through Philistines to enter Cana. But God decided that he would not take them through the road of the Philistines, but rather to open the Red Sea that they go into the wilderness. Are you with me? Which is a longer journey. Are you sure so you are with me? So, the part of their destiny, which is the road to freedom, is supposed to be a long walk of total transformation and change. Are you with me? And God said, I will take them through the Red Sea. Paradventure, if I take them through the land, if they see war, they will run back and prefer to go back to bondage. What does that inform you? It tells us that life was not orchestrated and organized to be easy. And life was not made to be war free. Are you with me somebody? So God is saying that I'm taking them through this journey because if I take them through this place, they've been slaved all through their lives. And to be a slave, to be a slave is to, is to have a mentality of being a subjugate. Someone who has been a subject for so many years. He can't make decisions for himself. Are you with me? That's a dis disadvantage of slavery. Glory to God. So God said if I take them through the way of the Philistines, they will make a decision to go back to Egypt. But I will take them through the Red Sea so that I can work on their character. So when they go through the Red Sea and they arrive the wilderness and there arose army against them, they look at the army and they think of not fighting. They go back and look at the Red Sea. It has already been closed. There's no more road. And energy will begin to wear up from inside. To rather fight or to run into the Red Sea to drown. Are you sure you are with me? So comparing man running into the Red Sea and turn the Red Sea is watery grave. The man has to make two decisions. Either I fight until hell freezes or I run into the Red Sea and make it my watery grave. Are you sure you are with me? So God wants us to be conscious of one thing. The, the power of the oppressor is the ignorance of the oppressed. The power of the oppressor is the ignorance of the oppressed. Why the power of the oppressed is the illumination and the knowledge he acquires. Therefore, there is never any total freedom until there is knowledge. Are you sure you are with me? So freedom is not a change in location, but a mental transformation. So what God is saying is that if I move them from Egypt now and try to take them to the promised land, they will only have changed location, but they are still the same people they were. They are only slaves that have been moved from one location to another. But I need to carry them that, from that place and move them to a camp. A camp where I will give them principles. A camp where I will give them do's and don'ts. A camp where I will show them how to live, how to understand government, and how to be a nation and that is what one nation means there's a nation there's a nation i know about some years ago and the nation begins with letter n and sometime around 1960 this nation gained independence and this nation thought independence just means i am free from colonial masters are you sure you are with me Ah, some almost 60 years later, this nation is still wallowing in dependence to these same colonial masters because he thought that freedom is change in location, not knowing that freedom is change in mentality, freedom is change in character, freedom is acquisition of relevant information, freedom is responsibility. It is more difficult, it is easier to be a slave than to be free. They thought to be free was easier. They never knew that it is easier to be a slave than to be free. Because when you are a slave, you wake up in the morning. You don't know where your food is coming from. You don't know where the light is coming from. You don't know where water body is supplying water from. You don't know where protection is coming from. But some 60 years later, after the colonial masters have gone, now we are wallowing in insecurity, thinking of how to eat, thinking of how to have light. Why? All these things we have provided so many years ago. We never knew where the light was coming from. We never knew how the pond was equal to one naira. Adabasa.
I'm trying to, I'm trying to take you somewhere. I knew about this nation some years ago. The nation begins with letter N. So the wilderness is a place of learning what you need to know to be free. Because and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Meaning freedom is not given, it's discovered. Freedom is not given. Freedom is discovered. And ye shall know, and the truth shall make you simple. Because I said the power of the oppressed on the oppressor is the ignorance of the oppressed. Why the power of the oppressed to live and break, and break the hold of the oppressor on him is the knowledge of the oppressed. So our way out is adequate knowledge, not just going to school, adequate, sufficient information. Yes. And ye shall know what you ought to know in this direction. And what you know will make you free. Are you with me? Yes. So God knew that these people, they've been slaves. They don't know what it means. To run a country. But he wants them to be free. But because he knows they don't know what it means to run a country. He moved them from that place to the wilderness. And what's the purpose of the wilderness? The purpose of the wilderness is for mental transformation. Be ye not conformed. Romans 12 2. Be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. The renewing of your mind. Are you sure you are with me? Because your mind is your essence. That is where character transformation is. You need to, you need to learn to understand that when money is available, it is supposed to be used for the purpose of the good of the entire people. You need to learn it as a discipline. Not that when you are in authority, you have money, you stock it up in Switzerland for your family alone. You need to learn that <laughs> before you can survive as a great nation. Glory to God. Are you sure you are with me? So God took them to the wilderness because the, the pattern of God to make anyone free is the same pattern. Are you with me? So the Red Sea is the first body of water. To cross the Red Sea, to cross the Red Sea, you need not do anything. Are you with me? Moses stretched the rod and the river parted. Miraculously, the river parted. And the Bible said that they walk on the Red Sea on dry ground without any effort. Are you with me? So to cross the first body of water is like in the New Testament, Egypt is called when we were not born again. Are you with me? In the New Testament, when they said, don't go back to Egypt, we are saying, don't go back to bondage anymore. So every one of us, the Bible says, every man was born in sin. So when we came into this world, we came under bondage. Are you sure you are with me? We were born before under bondage. But at some point, we become born again. Are you with me? Because we were born before. Now that we become born again, because we were born before, we become born again by the miracle power of God. Without, without really doing anything much other than saying, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. So miraculously, God takes you through the first body of water which is the Red Sea and you are now saved and you have been transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light all this we are miraculously done that you don't even know how it happened are you with me are you sure you are with me but brothers and sisters, don't mistake deliverance for freedom. You have been delivered from darkness to light, but you are yet not free. Because it's one thing to pull a man out of a mud. It's another thing to help the man bring out all the mud in his intestine.
in such a way. The man is free from being in mud, but the man is not free from mud within. Because there is a mud without and mud within. And the mud within is more powerful because it determines the actual state of the man. Is somebody with me? I'm taking you on a journey. I just want you to be with me just a while. In a while, I will arrive. Are you still with me? So, so, when they arrived the wilderness, I said the, 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 the Red Sea is a type of the first body of water. Are you sure you are with me? And Jesus also, he was born under the law. He came into the scene to show us how life should be. At 12, he was preaching the gospel already. But at 30, he needed to go and face to cross his first body of water. Are you sure you are with me? And he met, he met, he met John the Baptist and told him, it's time for me to cross my first body of water. And John the Baptist said, no, you are the one that is supposed to baptize me. And he told John the Baptist, no, no, no. It's, 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 it behooved of every man under God that everyone must pass through the first body of water. Are you sure you are with me? And as he entered into the water, the Bible said the heavens opened without his effort. Aha, a voice spoke, this is my beloved son without his effort. The spirit came upon him. Brothers and sisters, when the spirit came upon him, the Bible says in Luke chapter 4 verse 1, the spirit did not lead him to start ministry, but the spirit led him to the wilderness. Led him to the wilderness. Why? I know you have been declared the son of God. But come and prove by character that you are the son of God. Why? The wilderness is a place to test you and try you. And brothers and sisters, God had arranged it in such a way. You can die in the wilderness without ever being free according to God's plan. If your mind will remain the same way it was when you were in Egypt. Are you still with me? Is somebody with me? So when the spirit came upon him, it led him to the wilderness. To go and do what in the wilderness? Remember that in what Jesus was coming to achieve was what Adam had already failed to do in the Garden of Eden. And I told you on Sunday that Jesus was a type of the second Adam. Are you with me? Jesus was the last Adam. Adam was the first Adam. Are you with me? And he was made a man, but he sinned. Then God decided that the, the, the last Adam will be made a child so that it will grow and not depart from the way it ought to go because the other one was made a man. But this one has to be under parental authority. Train up a child in the way he should go. And now when he is old, he will not depart from it. So Jesus was made a child child so he can learn principles and develop character so he would be able to withstand the pressure. Are you sure you are with me? The same pressure. I told you also on Friday that the same temptation that Adam went through is the same temptation Jesus went through. Just that Adam failed at the first test but Jesus conquered all the three tests. Is somebody still with me? Can I preach like I feel? So the first body of water, the first body of water is always done miraculously, miraculously by the hand of God without no much effort from us as individuals. So in the Red Sea, their first body of water was the Red Sea. To us, our first body of water is salvation. Are you with me? And we are transferred from kingdom of darkness to light. Glory to God. But there is another body of water that is much ahead. You remember Moses was leading the children of Israel. But Moses at the point when they got to the wilderness began to have problem with the children of Israel. Because they said, and now that we are in Egypt, uh, in, in, in the wilderness, and we are remembering the cucumber we used to eat when we were in Egypt. Uh, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are remembering the onions and the garlics we used to eat in Egypt. Are you sure you are with me? And, and we want to go back to Egypt. Make us another leader, let us go back to Egypt. Uh, and now the Red Sea has been shorter. There is no way to go back to Egypt. 
you have become irrevocably committed. Mm. Another thing God is trying to tell us is that no matter what has happened in your past, you have to learn to develop capacity to forge ahead. Ayada baka so sepala. I know some man disappointed you 10 years ago. This is 10 years after. You are still thinking of how you were disappointed. Even there is another Johnny that has come your way. Johnny now loves you. But instead of loving Johnny the same way, you are still transferring the aggression of James upon Johnny. Take it easy, sister. Move on from the past. Have you been blessed by this teaching? We encourage you to fellowship with us at any of our worship centers. To do so or for further inquiries, please call 0806 075 6670 or 0816 569 3826. God bless you.